So let's talk about CRUD and REST APIs. Okay, so first question, what is CRUD? It's an acronym um, that we commonly use um, anytime we're talking about databases and, and web applications in, in particular. And CRUD stands for Create, Read, Update, Delete. Um, so you can think about that anytime I want to create data or add data to the database, that that's a common thing I need to do with my application. We call it creating. Um, reading is anytime I want to get data out. I want to read the data, um, whether that be be things like showing a list of all the products in the database or looking at my profile or searching for things in a store, right? All of those fall into read. Um, update is, is anything you might do on, for instance, an edit page, okay? Or it might even be things like, um, maybe I wanna like a post, right? Maybe that increase, increases the like, like count. So that would be an, an update to the post. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then delete is generically anything, anytime where I want to delete um, data from an application. Um, so largely your functionality in your application can be broken up into those four things. Um, uh, now your read is usually quite a bit more than just kind of one piece because there's a lot of ways to slice and dice your data. Um, so there would be a lot more pages that read than the pages that create, update, and delete. Um, but for any of your major tables, there should be basically a page where you can create data, there should be a page where you can update data, and there should be a way to delete it, right? So when we're kind of dealing with these CRUD verbs, uh, oftentimes we'll map them over to SQL verbs, right? And specifically the, the verbs that we use in the data manipulation language, okay? Um, so that means when we're talking about create, we mean insert, right? So we're inserting data. Reading would be the select statement, right? And update would be update, delete is delete. So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about CRUD. Um, this is one of the ones that people get confused sometimes um, when I'm talking about create, remember there is a there is the keyword create in SQL. But what do we use the keyword create for in SQL? To like create the actual database or table that you uh -huh. need data. To create the what part of the database? Structure. The structure or the schema the schema right so if i'm talking about the schema these keywords in in um then we're talking about the ddl not the dml so if i'm talking about create in in sql that means i'm creating a a table or a database or an index or a view um, i'm creating something that's part of the schema um, versus if i want to say update something in the schema the keyword there the verb we use is alter so if we're talking about the schema the those keywords are create alter and drop does that make sense yep so you've got crud in your ddl which use a different set of verbs than the crud that we have in our dml where we're manipulating the the actual data Okay, so these are the ones that we are interested in when we're dealing with the data. So we can also kind of do the same mapping. We can map CRUD onto our HTTP verbs, right? So if we say we want to create data, well, what we do is we say, well, that's post. Post is creating data. Um, we'll say reading, we'll map that to get, right? Does that kind of make sense? Reading data is get? Yeah. Um, if we want to update data, we'll use put, and if we want to delete data, we'll do delete. So um, the two that people usually get confused are the, the update and the create. Um, those are the ones you want to keep straight. So when you're doing a create, when you're adding data to the database, that's when we're talking about REST APIs, that's going to be a post request. If we're updating data, that's going to be a put request. Now, if you're just doing forms, normally we'll still stick with get and post. But what we're building today is what we call a REST API. And, and so with a REST API, we need to map these verbs to actions.
okay? So, so kind of keep that straight in your mind. If you're having a form, that form's still gonna be only submitted usually between get and post. Um, but when we're building this API back on the back end, we'll kind of have all four of these verbs. So let's talk about how we can use that. We've mapped the verbs, right? So let's say how we can, you know, use that kind of idea that we can map um, the verbs in CRUD, we can map them to both SQL and we can map them to HTTP request, HTTP methods. Well, we can then say, well, let, what, if, what if I take that together and I map routes to actions like this, okay? So, so typically the way we, we do this mapping is where I would say, I've got a route to get a product. Well, that would then, that route would give me a list of products. With me? Yeah. Or I could say, well, I want to get a specific product. So I'd say slash product ID, that would be to view a single product. So I've got without an ID, it gives me all the products. With the ID, it gives me a single product. Okay. So that's, that's kind of reading the data. Both of those are operations to read the data. The next thing I want to do is be able to add posts or add products in this case. So I want to add products. And so I would say the route here is post product. If I post to the product, then I'm adding a new product. Yeah, and the, the ID would be auto increment, right? So you wouldn't right. need to put that on. Right, we don't put an ID in the path here because we don't know the ID yet. Does that make sense? If I knew the ID when I was doing the insert, then I could put it in the path. But generally speaking, you don't know the ID when you're doing an insert because it's gonna get generated from that, right? Whether you're doing auto increment or other approaches. Questions? Okay. So for an insert, I don't know the ID yet. So that's why I don't have that in there. But ver on the other hand, if I am inserting something, then I do then I do know the ID, and because I do know the ID, I would say have the ID there. So put product ID would be the path that you would go to if you wanted to edit a product. And then finally, to delete a product, I would say delete product ID. Does that make sense? So I've kind of mapped all of these actions. So I can do the, all four CRUDs going to this product ID path just with a different HTTP method. Um, so like you have the words get, post, put, and delete. Do they have to be those words or is it just like a semantic kind of ordeal? It needs to be those words because those remember, those are the words that exist in HTTP. So okay, it so... has to be those words. Okay. Yeah, you can't use get, add, update, remove, those words don't work. It has to be those four words. Get, post, put, and delete. Because that's what's part of the HTTP protocol. Cool? Yeah. Okay, so if we're, we're creating these routes in, in Express, remember how we created the get routes? It was like dot get and then the route path, right? Same thing with, with post, it was dot post. If you want to create a route for put or delete, it's dot put. You put it in the same way as like a post dot delete. You put it in the same way as a post. Um, so so creating routes like this is is not really much harder than what we've already done. Cool. Um, one thing to keep in mind. Okay. When I go open a page in a browser, what method does it send when I just type it into the address bar? Get. It just goes in as get, right? So if I want to test the post, put, or delete routes, um, what we're going to need to do is we're going to use another tool to test those routes. Okay, We can actually use that tool to test all five of these, um, but just recognize that your browser can really only test those first two. So we're going to use a tool called Postman, and that will let us test all five of these um, outside of the browser. So in general, if I'm building a REST API, um, the path to those endpoints will generally have slash API in it, right? So, so if I want to say the, the path of the REST API, the, get the list of customers, 
this would be slash API slash customer. Um, versus if I have a route that slash customer, just slash customer without the API, the assumption is that that's going to return HTML. When we build our REST API, it's actually going to return JSON objects and arrays instead of HTML. So our REST API will not return HTML, it will return JSON. And one of the things that means is these routes, these API routes, won't actually go through handlebars. Okay, because handlebars is used to generate HTML. So as we build this, this REST API, you'll recognize that you're going to see things a little bit differently um, because we won't be using handlebars in building that API. So REST APIs and JSON, really a match made in heaven. Um, the, you can really write your REST APIs to send and receive any kind of data in any format. Back in the day, we, we used to use XML. Um, you know, we might in the future, if something ever were to replace JSON, we could replace it with that. Um, or you could say that um, maybe these API points just want to return plain text. All of that's okay. Um, the important part with REST is that you're taking these the HTTP routes and, and, and verbs and mapping them to CRUD operations. So you can do that with any sort of data interchange format. Any format you can come up with, you can do a REST API for. Um, but typically when we're talking about REST APIs, at least nowadays, um, we're talking about the JSON format exclusively in terms of getting data to, to those endpoints and sending data back. So if I'm thinking about JSON data, for instance, this first one, this one returns a list of customers, right? This is going to return a, a JSON array. That makes sense because that's returning more than one customer. This would return a single customer, so it would be, would it be an array or would it be an object? Object. It would be an object, right? So, so typically this endpoint's going to return an array and this endpoint's going to return an object. Similarly, actually all four of these down here, if I'm inserting a customer, editing a customer or, or deleting a customer, in general, all four of those endpoints there are going to return an object. So the first one is the only one that returns an array. So the API customer returns an array. All the rest of them will more than likely return an object. Okay, And that matters oftentimes when you're dealing with the results that come back is to keep that in mind. So REST APIs, and, and this is where they really shine, um, they really pr provide, they, they provide a very easy way to get our front-end code and our back-end code to talk to each other. Um, they provide a kind of a, a bridge here where we can, we can allow it to get there, but we can also provide security mechanisms that ensure that not just anybody can go access our data. Right? So we can, we can impose a lot of restrictions on our REST API, including you know, that you have, to have log, you have to be logged in, maybe you have to be an admin to use that particular endpoint, or um, other things like verifying that the data is correct. So oftentimes validation is also built into these, um, these endpoints as well. So they provide a way to, to get from the front end to the back end, and they're kind of one of the chief ways that will do that communication going forward. Um, now that communication between the, the front end and our REST APIs is going to happen over AJAX. Okay, So we really haven't done too much with AJAX yet. Um, my plan is to cover and, and talk about AJAX on Monday. Um, because I'm pretty sure we won't get that far today is, is to talk about the Ajax motion in it. But the whole idea of Ajax um, is that we can do these operations without having to refresh the page. That's, that's where this comes in, is we can build this API and, and make it available, and then that API can be used over Ajax. Um, another big thing that comes in here, when we build these REST APIs, um, they're really um, agnostic to what the front end is. So I can use this REST API in my web application, um, but I can also use this these REST APIs in, in applications that are not web applications, right? So, so what kind of application might I build that wouldn't be a web application? Just talking about something like C Sharp. Okay, something in C Sharp, sure. Which would be what? What? What did you learn in second semester? 
like desktop application. You learn how to build desktop applications. So maybe I have a desktop application that needs to talk to a database, right? Well, I can do that communication from C Sharp or whatever I want to build that in. I can do that with a REST API. So these REST APIs can be built to not just serve our, our application, but can also be served to uh, our website, but can be used to serve um, desktop applications as well. What other kind of applications are there? So there's there's web applications, there's desktop applications. What else? Kind of like mobile, mobile applications. Mobile applications. So oftentimes, let's say you have a, a an app on your smartphone, right? Um, let's say you've specifically got maybe the Facebook app on your smartphone, right? Do you think all the logic for Facebook is in that little app? Nay. Mm -hmm. Nay. Where's, where's Facebook keep their data? Database somewhere. In a database somewhere, right? Do you think your app has direct interface with that database? Nope. Probably not, right? That would be a big security problem, right? So your Facebook app is going through a REST API. Twitter is going through a REST API. Um, so pretty much most of the applications that are, you have on your phone um, at some point, we'll connect to a REST API um, to send data back and forth. Um, so not only are they REST APIs are a fundamental un thing you need to understand for web development, they're actually really important for building mobile apps too. And one of the things that means is if you're going to build a, a mobile app, you probably, if you're going to build a real-world mobile app, that, that real-world mobile app is probably, most of them, are going to have a website. Uh, they're going to have a website with a database and a, a REST API that they can communicate with. So, so keep this in mind longer than just the semester because is, this idea of REST API really dominates. Um, it's not the only way to do things, but it really dominates basically the entire in the entire software industry now whatever you're building you're probably going to need a rest api somewhere unless if for some reason it doesn't need to go to the internet uh, typically that's going to go over ajax ajax is an uh, is an acronym for asynchronous javascript and xml right um, so as I was saying, Ajax is a way for us to, to send data back and forth between our, our front end and our back end. Now, can anybody tell me what this term XML is? What is XML? Uh, I think it's obsolete now, isn't it? Okay, that's one thing that's, yeah, pretty close to it. It's pretty close to obsolete. There are still things using it. It's a data structure that's similar to JSON, isn't it? It's not similar to JSON. It's similar to something else. I, I think it's also related to HTML. It's HTML. Yes. XML is much closer, is, is, is very akin to HTML. Um, thing being, HTML is basically designed for showing documents in a web browser. XML is a generic format for sending data back and forth. Um, so it used to be that we wrote um, our web services or web APIs largely with XML going back and forth, um, and that's been supplanted largely by by JSON. Um, so it, JSON and, and XML are similar in the fact that they're both um, they're both kind of languages to send data da data back and forth as text. Um, but they're different in, in oh, quite a few ways in terms of their actual syntax. Does that make sense? Yeah. Nowadays, yes, we'll still talk about, about Ajax, but in that, in there, we don't really use the X anymore of Ajax. Uh, we don't really use XML anymore. We've we basically replaced that with with JSON instead. Um, and, and as it turns out, that that's not a huge difference um, because basically um, Ajax was never really designed to send a XML back and forth. It was actually designed to send text back and forth. Um, so JSON is still text, so it works pretty much flawlessly. Um, it's just the XML, the JSON's a lot easier to work with than, than XML, and it's also a lot smaller. Okay.
So the key kind of thing that Ajax does for us is it allows us to send what we call asynchronous HTTP requests. So for instance, you know, every time that you uh, every time that you enter something into an address bar, right? Remember that goes as a GET request, specifically an HTTP request. Or every time I post, I, I submit a form, right? I'm I'm sending an a, an HTTP request. So without AJAX, you know, we don't really have a way to do that dynamically, right? I can't without AJAX. I can't say, okay, when you submit the form let's go send the data to the server, some sort of HTTP request, but not refresh the page, right? Because refreshing a page is just a normal thing that it does, right? So Ajax allows us kind of do that out of band without a page refresh. Um, and that then lets us to have UIs that are much more dynamic. Um, you may have remembered, I think when you built one of those landing pages, I think it was unit one. Remember you built those two landing pages and you kind of had like a, a newsletter form or a contact us form that was towards the bottom of the page? Yeah. You remember how it kind of scrolled up to the top of the page? Yeah. Yeah, well, that would be a case where, you know, Ajax is preferable because then you can avoid that scroll because that scroll is happening because you're getting a page refresh. Um, other things you commonly see um, let's say I, I like a post on Facebook or Twitter. Um, does the page refresh? Nope. Nope. Typically doesn't, right? So if I'm going to do a like button, I, I really, really, really want to use Ajax for a like button um, because it makes, the, a, it makes the UI a lot cleaner. Um, similarly, if you're deleting things, oftentimes deleting things is a really good place to use Ajax. Um, because then you don't have to change pages. The user can kind of go delete, 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 delete. You probably want a confirmation box in there somewhere, but um, you can make it a lot more user friendly using Ajax. So most delete buttons will be an Ajax call. And even that being said, um, let's say I want to add something to the, the database. Maybe I want to add a new product, right? Um, I'd like for that add page to be a little bit more dynamic, not have page refreshes. Um, so, you know, that's that's another place where I would still actually still use Ajax, although it isn't necessarily required. So edit and edit pages, they're not as important that they're Ajax, um, but it still get, can give you a lot of um, usability benefits if you do. So what that means is large in part, anything that you do that changes data, especially, um, is is a good place to put in date put in ajax cool yeah uh, okay so ajax and then there's the rest so mm -hmm. uh, those are two different things or is yes. ajax the way we interface with rest yes ajax is the way we interface with rest you're right so so rest is the way we define the api the interface of, of things that we can do and the routes this collection of routes that you have so that's how we define the back end. Um, and then the Ajax is what we use on the front end to talk to the back end. Does that make sense? So we have eight, we have rest on the back end and Ajax on the front end talking to it. So now that we've talked about the theory, right? Let's go build something. Let's go build a rest API. Um, so let's dive in with, with our cowboy boots application and let's see about building this.